hoping you make would work The American Woodshop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Delta, the heart of woodworking for over 85 years. Porter Cable, the soul of woodworking for over 100 years. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. As a way of improving my own woodwork in a business environment so I could get it fast and efficient. And then when I started teaching people, it was all about what can we do to make this so quick that the guy can look at it and say, gee, I could do that. And if he can say I could do that, he will do that. Sharpening for most people is such a drawn out procedure that they avoid it. And if you avoid it, it's going to show up in your work. But if we can turn it into a procedure that is less than a minute from the time you tear it apart to your back working, they'll do that. Because we're all lazy, right? Honestly, everybody's intimidated by the sharpening process. So well, you're going to simplify it. Yeah. First thing you need to understand, what are you trying to do? What is a cutting edge? It's where this surface meets that surface. And the only part that's important is the actual apex or the point where they touch. The surface of both has to be smooth in order for it to be an effective cutting edge. But if you were to polish all the way down here, it doesn't increase the advantage. It does nothing for you other than waste your time and your material. So you need only do the very leading edge of both surfaces. Right. That is the real secret. And there's a technique to doing that. So I've got a piece of wet dry sandpaper. I've got a uh, granite reference block that you can usually pick up for less than $30. I'm using a Norton combination 1,000, 8,000 grit stone. I'm going to start with the 1,000. The stone has to be flat. The secret to sharpening, if you want to call it a secret, your tools can only be as sharp as your stones are flat when you start. So a few seconds on this piece of paper will bring that back to being flat. Flip it over and then do the 8,000 side. Water stones are nothing more than abrasives held in place by some kind of a bonding agent. The bonding agent wears, you get fresh cutting particles. But the bonding agent wears, it goes out of flat. So you're constantly having to bring it back into flat. And on a stone like that, no more than 30 seconds of work without stopping and reflattening. If you don't, it shows up in your tools. All right, keep the surface wet, sometimes helps to have a little uh, dish soap in there. It'll just give you a little more lubrication and I've never found it to hurt the stone. You gotta hold the blade properly. And I hold the blade like this with my right hand. I put my index finger in there, one, two, three, four fingers on the cutting edge so that I can dispense the uh, pressure evenly across that cutting edge. I'm not back here, I'm right out here. Right. And I squeeze my thumbs together so that the two act as one. Now everybody says, well, why is your sharpening station way down there? Simple. Most guys try to freehand up here. And in the process of doing this and introducing this, they end up making a mess of the blade. Yep. What I discovered in teaching it was that if I head it down low, the first advantage is I could hold the blade, lock my wrist and elbow, and pivot from way up here. And the farther away I can get the pivot point, the easier it's going to be to maintain that angle. Number two, by leaning over the stone, instead of having to move my arms, I can simply rock heel and toe while I'm doing this, not disrupting this motion, and I'm able to do it effectively. And number three, you want a stone that cuts very fast because the faster it cuts, the less time I have to hold that very specific angle. So, keep the surface of the stone wet. I take the blade and I set it down on what we call the primary bevel. Now I'm going to raise up off that primary bevel about four degrees. Now that's something that people say, well, gee, Rob, how are you going to know, how you going to know what four <laughs> degrees is? Well, to get you started, I developed a little thing called the Rob Cosman Angle Trainer. And it's nothing more than a piece of composite material that has a couple of powerful magnets with a 29 degree slope on one side and a 31 on the other. 
So you would set the 29 degree down sight on the 1000 grit stone. You'd hold the blade the same way you would if you're doing it freehand, but when you engage the magnets, that supports the blade, and then you can go ahead and do it just as you would if you didn't have it, but for the first couple of months, you've got this little thing in here helping train your muscles. When you're done with that stone, you flip it over, you take your angle trainer, turn it over to the 31 degree side, which elevates another two degrees. But let me do it my freehand way, and it'll introduce right. how that works. Hold the blade as such, lay it on the primary bevel, raise up about four degrees. Now I have my blade on an angle because of how wide the angle is in relation to how wide the stone is. It takes about 10 seconds. You'll notice that I'm rocking heel and toe, but I'm keeping a very precise posture with my arms. After about 10 seconds, you want to feel for a burr on the back side. Now, it's, not, it's there, but it's not quite, so I'm going to give it a little bit more. And Primary this, angle is 25 degrees. 20, 25, and we're working on what we would call a secondary bevel. This is going to be about 29 degrees. Right. Okay, now I can detect a burr. And as long as the burr goes from corner to corner, if that stone is flat, if the burr can be identified going corner to corner, and if my finger pressure was consistent across the edge, then that means that edge from there to there is perfectly straight. Straight is defined as the shortest distance between two points. That last statement is critical, because now I'm going to turn the stone over, sorry, and I'm going to work on a very fine stone. It's 8,000 grit. Now, most people say, well, Rob, what about the in-between grits? You don't need them. Here's why. If you're using the angle trainer, you're now going to switch it over and use the 31 degree side, which means by elevating the blade a couple of degrees higher than the last secondary bevel I put on, the only part of the blade that will be touching the stone will be the very leading edge because that's flat and this is straight. That means I'm going to create a third bevel. We call it a tertiary bevel. And all it has to do is get down below the 1,000 grit scratches left on the edge of the blade, leaving a very, very small, you've got to have a microscope to see it, tertiary bevel with 8,000 grit scratches, and that part of the blade is done. So I'll find the primary bevel, raise up a little bit higher than I did on the last one, spend the same 10 seconds. At the end of the 10 seconds, while in the exact same motion, I'm going to push down on one corner for about three seconds. Then I'm going to push down on the opposite corner for about three seconds. And what that does, it creates a very light feathering on the outside corner so that we can eliminate what would be called plane tracks when we're actually planing a wide panel. Now my final procedure, we just employ something called micro bevels to reduce the real estate that had to be worked on this side. Most people would then go through and flatten and polish all of the back to only use right here. So a friend of mine, David Charlesworth, developed this. A little steel rule set on the edge of the stone. Set the blade down on its back and working on the opposite quarter inch edge of the stone, pull the blade on, move it forward and back just for about three seconds and you're done. What you've created is something we call a back bevel, less than a degree, but instead of polishing all of the back, we only polish a very small strip which coincides with a very small strip over here, and now we have an effective cutting edge in a fraction of the time, and let's prove it. And he has just simplified the sharpening process a factor of about a thousand. Set that in, make sure that all the contact points touch and that it lays flat. Put your lever cap on with enough pressure to hold it in place, but not so much pressure that it makes it difficult to make your adjustments. Wipe one way, you'll leak if you do it the other way. <laughs> Now I'm sighting down the sole and I see more blade on this side than this side so I'll use the lateral adjustment lever to just tweak it ever so lightly. Then I retract the blade fully. And the reason I retract the blade fully, I don't want to start planing something not knowing exactly how far the blade is projecting. So I'm now going to start, while planing, I start advancing the blade until I pick up a shaving. And that is that. It cannot be done better more precisely or faster. Imagination. These, in my mind, are the best value in hand planes that's ever been invented. And with your skill and expertise, little things like ball bearings underneath the adjustment lever and the yeah. way this ductile iron is milled to precision and perpendicular and the sole is flat, you can't get a better value in a plane. Well, that was, that was always stuff that you only got on premium planes and you had to pay a premium price. I'm not saying it wasn't worth it, 
I'm just saying it eliminated a lot of people from the potential market because they couldn't afford it. What Woodcraft has done that is so incredible is that they have brought that level of quality into a price range that most anybody can afford. And now these guys can actually come in who have looked at hand planes and thought, gee, I'm not that into it and I don't want to spend $400. But boys, I tell you, if you could spend $150, $170 and find something that would do this and leave that, yeah, it's as perfect. opposed to coughing your way through four grits of sandpaper, <laughs> this, this is, and it's, you know, people will watch me do this and they say, what are you doing? I said, I'm just relaxing. It is the most therapeutic, and I'll sit here sometimes, I, you don't have to think, you just peel off these onion skins. And there you have it. That's the new real story on hand planes in America from Woodcraft. Rob Cosman, thank you so much for all the things Pleasure. you brought to hand planes. And looking forward to having you on the American Woodshop. We'll be there. That one's better. The American Woodshop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by... Delta, the heart of woodworking for over 85 years. Porter Cable, the soul of woodworking for over 100 years. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Woodcraft.